What do clothes in the movies tell us about the characters that are wearing them? A costume can tell us a story as much as a script, translating the character and their emotions through the clothes. Costume designers or storytellers figuring out the character, how messy or neat they are, what kind of clothes they would wear in a specific situation, and what they're currently going through in life. Today we'll explore movies that showcase outstanding costume design and highlight the exceptional work of costume designers. One of the most known collaborations between the costume designer and the actress must be between Audrey Hepburn and Hubert de Givenchy. They do work together for the first time on the set of Sabrina in 1954. Audrey plays Sabrina Fairchild, a chauffeur's daughter, a slightly sloppy teenager who falls in love with one of your sons of your father's wealthy employer. She then goes to Paris and transforms into a lady of a class and elegance. One of the outfits Audrey selected in Paris was an elegant, double-breasted, colorless wool suit that Sabrina wears on her first day back at home. The second look from Givenchy was a bustier gown in white organdy decorated with a navy floral embroidery pattern of silk thread and jet beads. Sabrina had to look like a princess when she arrived at the Lara B. Ball, standing out from other guests. And the last dress is a black satin boat neck dress, Givenchy said he adapted his design to Audrey's desires as she wanted a bare shoulder evening dress modified to hide her collarbone. What he invented for her became a style so popular that the designer named it Decolette Sabrina. It was known to be designed by Edith Hatt and only after her death did Givenchy confirm that the dress was his original design. This dress made her burn a style icon and started her iconic association with a little black dress. And as a 1950s movie featuring Edith Head as a costume designer in Rare Window, directed by Alfred Hitchcock and starring Grace Kelly and James Stewart in the main roles. Grace Kelly's character is a model and a glamorous editor of a fashion magazine. The costume that she wears convinces us of her status as a fashion icon and socialite, but also portray beautifully the elegant 1950s style. Her first look is an elegant monochromatic dress with a full white circle skirt and off the shoulder top. This is followed by a little black dress with a full circle 1950s skirt, a white dress embroidered with gold flowers, and a pistachio green suit with a peel box hat popular during the 1950s. She accompanies all of her outfits with pearls and red lipstick as the actress herself was known for her love of pearls. The costumes not only showcase the classic staples of the 1950s, but also match Grace Kelly's style as in many of her movies. I think costume designs of Rare Window are a great addition to another Grace Kelly movie, High Society, which is also known for its fashion. If you like Alfred Hitchcock work and also want to see some amazing 1950s fashion, this movie is going to be a great pick for you. In Emma, costume designer Alexander Byrne has made a love letter to the Austin era. Every garment in this movie is historically accurate to the Regency period and true to each character. Anya Taylor-Joy plays Highbury's Queen Bee Emma, who plans to use her great wealth and influence to create an advantageous match for her friend Harriet. Byrne has previously won an Oscar for Elizabeth the Golden Age, has not only made the costumes historically accurate, but also pleasing to watch and relatable. The historical touch include the ham decorations with colored linings that were so late 1810s, and Byrne used colored silk slips under the white muslins, a trend that was probably more widely practiced in the Regency era than recorded in fashion plates. With the use of layers, the dresses appear different, even though Emma only has three muslin dresses in the film. This reuse of dresses makes them seem more relatable and realistic. The color scheme for most of the cast ranges from earth tones to burgundies, with their position in that range indicating their wealth. The richer they are, the more burgundy they wear, and the poorer they are, the more earthy tones dominate the wardrobe. Emma's wardrobe is filled with bright colors and pastels, allowing her to stand out and showing her social status and wealth. If you love historically accurate costumes and the Regency era fashion that is not adapted to the modern audiences, <coughs> Bridgerton, then you should have Emma on your watch list. Released in 1997, Romy and Michelle's high school reunion follows two friends, Romy, played by Mira Sorvino, and Michelle, played by Lisa Kudrow. They discover their 10-year reunion is approaching and realize their lives aren't impressive. After failing to lose weight, find new jobs, or gain boyfriends, they decide to attend with a little white lie. They claim to have invented post-its. 
the costume designer Mona May, who has also designed costumes for another iconic fashion movie Clueless, had a lot of creative freedom when it comes to costume designs. Surprisingly, even though the movie was very fashion focused, uh, there was no information in the movie script about the costumes, except that they should be colorful. She squeezes every incredible mid to late 90s trend into this movie, leaving out less exciting fashion moments like flannel. There are feathers, chunky heels, fruit jewelry, suits, and bright colors in abashedly feminine looks. Nearly all outfits embrace color, playfulness, and cheeky accessories, embracing femininity. Romy and Michelle's costumes are also relatable because they make their clothes themselves or thrift them as they have no money. The costume designs were ahead of their time, varying a mix of designer, thrifted, and basic pieces, as thrift shopping wasn't so popular in the 90s, and especially was not worn together with the design pieces. 13 Going on 30 is a mid 2000 romantic comedy starring Jennifer Garner as a Jenna Ring. At 13, Jenna wishes to be 30, flirty and thriving, and the next day she wakes up as a 30-year-old woman. Costume designer Susie DeSanto, known for her work on Miss Congeniality, perfectly captures mid-2000 fashion and how a 13-year-old might envision dressing as an adult with a walk-in wardrobe. The iconic stripped Versace mini dress Jenna wears during the thriller dance scene remains a popular Halloween costume and a sought-after look that gets recreated regularly. The film's fashion is a quintessential example of the era, featuring pastels, floral prints, low-waisted skirts, cardigans, and the statement handbags. The girly and gentle fashion of the time aligns well with Jenna's childlike perspective as a 30-year-old. If you love the 2000s fashion, or if you're about to turn 30, I think you will love this movie, and not only for the costume designs. The 1930s was a golden era of Hollywood and the most glamorous period for costume design. During this time, many movies featuring fashion shows and uh, very high end profile costumes that are very sought after. The famed Lady Linton dress being the best example of it. The movie Lady Linton, named after its main character, was released in 1932 with John Crawford in the lead role. She plays a New York City socialite who gets away with murder. The costume designer Adrienne, who also worked on Mata Hari and Wizard of Oz, has created a dress that this movie is now best remembered for. A white cotton organdy gown with large ruffled sleeves puffed at the shoulder. The dress became so popular that department store Macy's have made a copy of it and started selling it for $10 each, which is $180 equivalent today. Dress became a major fashion trend of the time, and the Macy claims to have sold somewhere between 50,000 and 500,000 copies of the dress, which is a major amount of dresses in that time. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, released in 1953, focuses on two gold digging showgirls played by Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell. The movie's costumes designer is William Travilla, who designed the costumes for eight of Marilyn Monroe's movies. The iconic orange dress in the bar scene of the movie, made in form fitting rouge chiffon, holds a special place in film history. It is said that the dress even caused the gasps from film goers when they saw Marilyn Monroe in it alongside her co-star Jane Russell. But it is not this dress that stole the show in the movie. But the shocking pink silk dress used in the most famous scene of the film, Monroe's performance of the song Diamonds Her Girl's Best Friends, which subsequently became the subject of numerous imitations. The original ensemble for this musical number was to be a black body stocking draped with jewels and a large feather hat piece. However, during the production of the movie, the scandal has erupted when the nude picture of Marilyn Monroe posing for the first issue of Playboy back in 1949 were published. So to distance uh, Marilyn and the movie itself from the controversy, they decided to use a different dress which was less revealing. And Trevilla created a more modest pink dress in just two days. The dress has secured a place in movie history and cemented Marilyn Monroe's status as a style icon. The 2023 Barbie movie, directed by Greta Gerwig, is a live-action adaptation starring Margot Robbie as Barbie. The film explores Barbie's journey of self-discovery as she ventures from the fantastical Barbie land into the real world. Costume designer Jacqueline Durand, who has also worked on the costumes in Little Women and Anna Karenina, has created a bright, candy-colored wardrobe inspired by Mattel's history from the late 70s through the late 80s. 
The difference in the costume designs in the Barbie movie is that compared to the regular movie where uh, the costumes are following the character and what they're going through, um, here the costumes are following what Barbies are doing, therefore coming from outside of the character. Therefore, the costume changes are frequent and we can see a beautiful range from beach outfits to the 1959 Barbie original costume reference to the disco party and the amazing collaboration of Chanel with Barbie. Several Chanel suits that Barbie is wearing for the conference were costume made for the movie referencing the 1995 Karl Lagerfeld Barbie collection, which suits Margaret Robbie perfectly. Cruella, released in 2021, stars Emma Stone and explores the region story of Cruella de Vil from the 101 Dalmatines. The film follows Estella, an aspiring fashion designer in 1970s London, as she transforms into the vengeful and stylish Cruella. Costume designer Janie Beaven, known for her work on Mad Max Fury Road, does a great job in capturing the Cruella's genius designs, as well as the 1970s London, and inspiration by the world-known designers such as Alexander McQueen, Vivian Westwood, Dior, and Balenciaga. Alexander McQueen's visionary shows influenced the costumes in Cruella, including a hooded cape set flame, a punk rock shows by a fountain, and a garbage truck unveiling a voluminous pink tulle dress. The latter is the one of the Cruella's most striking outfits, a 40-foot-long dress with a bodice adorned with the newspaper clippings about Cruella, inspired by John Galliano's Dior newspaper prints. The dress's dramatic movement recalls Alexander McQueen's 2006 fall-winter collection. As Bevan explains in an interview, Cruella mirrors the McQueen's impact on the fashion world. Both are wild and bold, but their creations are deeply rooted in political statements. For the Baroness, Cruella's competitor and nemesis, costume designer Bevan drew heavily from Dior and Balenciaga. Though a legendary designer, the Baroness is portrayed as nearing the end of her reign, hence her wardrobe features old-fashioned Dior-inspired designs Overall, the movie feels like a love letter to Alexander McQueen and London in the 1970s, making it my own favorite examples of a great costume design in the movie. The 1992 movie Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, is an adaptation of a Bram Stoker's classic novel. The film follows the story of Count Dracula, played by Gary Oldman, who travels to Victorian London after centuries of living in Transylvania. Aiko Ishioka was chosen as a costume designer for the movie. She has subsequently worked on the costume designs for The Fall and Miro Miro. However, in 1992, the Coppola's choice of Ishioka as a costume designer was a bit surprising, as Ishioka had never seen a vampire movie and had only worked in the advertising industry before. Despite this, her designs still controlled the film visual language, influencing actor movements and story development, making it a true fashion movie and worthwhile to watch. Upon arriving in London, Dracula wears a Victorian-inspired three-piece suit that is one of his most stylish outfits. His old forms, voluminous, kimono-inspired crimson robe, embroidered with his family crest, symbolizes his entrapment in the past. For Dracula's final costume, a gold robe, Ishioka drew inspiration from Klimt's painting The Kiss. For Lucia's wedding dress, in the final scene, the designer took inspiration from Australian reptiles with frilled necks and the 17th century portraits by Michael Conrad Hurt. Ishioka's costumes added an iconic, thrilling and stunning definition to Dracula's film, redefining the Dracula iconic look. I had a lot of fun preparing for this video, as there is so many movies with really, really good costume designs. Um, let me know in the comments what is your favorite movie with a great costume design or costume design with in favorite costume design in the movie. Uh, and I will I think I will be making a list uh, with what you share or also what I find. Um, and if you want, I can share it with you as well. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching and bye.